I want you guys in this next demonstration to pay close attention to the feeling of the polyrhythm of four against five against six. Four evenly spaced pulses in the same amount of time as five evenly spaced pulses, as in the same amount of time as six evenly spaced pulses. Pay close attention to how the polyrhythm makes you feel. Then I'm going to speed it up, and then like magic, it will turn into a major chord. I might have just ruined it for you, but let's, uh, let's try it. So this is a regular kick drum. I'm going to layer in the polyrhythm. Feels pretty cool, actually. When you speed it up, I always found that funny that it's such a triumphant rhythm. The major chord has such a it sounds like a major chord. Um, and you know, this is the case for any chord, any harmony. Anytime you have more than one note, you can break it down to its polyrhythm. And here's the thing, polyrhythms that are easy to feel are easy to hear when they're sped up. We had a good time listening to that. So that means consonants, the idea of something sounding good. That's a, like kind of an uh, oversimplification, but consonants is just polyrhythms which are easy to hear slash feel. That's all it is. Anytime that you hear something that sounds good to you and sounds stable, it's just a polyrhythm which is easy to hear slash feel. Now, I mean, the term good, sounds good, is uh, I mean it just in the sense of something that sounds rested, there's no tension. Maybe tension feels good to you, maybe tension sounds good to you. So if tension sounds and feels good to you, maybe you need a polyrhythm which creates tension. So we're going to start with a perfect fourth, which if you think about a perfect fourth, it's not particularly, there's not a lot of tension to it. And if you look at the ratio of a perfect fourth, four against three, that's not particularly complicated. But if we then listen to a major seventh, there's a fair amount of tension in the interval of a major seventh, 15 against eight. And when you compare the two of them, and we put the two of them layered on, so in the key of C, this would be a C, an F, and a B. It's going to be a pretty spicy sort of chord. So I want you to listen when we do this next demonstration to first the, um, where I'm going to layer in the perfect fourth. So it's just going to be this like, nice consonant four against three polyrhythm. And then I'm going to layer in the 15 against eight. And then you're going to hear cacophony. It's going to be really dissonant. It's going to be a dissonant polyrhythm. And then we're going to speed it up. And then you're going to hear the harmony that's the result. And you'll hear that dissonance. So. Feels good. All right. 15 against 8 is not going to feel good. If you really spend some time with it, you'd be able to hear it maybe, but oh God, it's hard. It sounds like popcorn going off. When you speed it up, So, polyrhythms that are hard to feel are hard to hear when they're sped up. So dissonance is just polyrhythms which are hard to hear slash feel. We like the sort of the juxtaposition of tension and release. We like uh, the release that comes from being able to hear when the polyrhythm resolves, like in the major chord. We like to hear the beginning of that phrase. But we also like when there's tension, because then it makes those, uh, those moments of resolution so much sweeter. And we just heard it play out on two planes. We heard it play out on the rhythmic plane, and then also on the pitch plane. And I found that really, really interesting when I was first getting into this stuff. One book that sort of illuminated a lot of things for me was this book by Henry Cowell, New Musical Resources. And he talks about something called tempo scales in this book. It's a very influential book for a lot of different uh, thinkers of the 20th century. Uh, including, uh, you know, Conlon Nancaro, who's a pretty amazing, if you don't know Conlon Nancaro, it's probably the most insane music you'll ever hear. But he was very, um, very influenced by this book and the idea of tempo scales. Polyrhythms, beats per minute, and notes are all the same. There's this chart in this book where he basically says, this is the ratio from C, these are the tones of the chromatic scale, these are the equivalent BPMs. 
all of them are the same. We just think of them slightly differently depending on our musical needs. And, you know, here's the question, though. What does this have to do with Isaac Newton? We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Uh, we're building an argument from scratch that everything is the same. Essentially, the point of this lecture is that everything is everything, um, and Isaac Newton is the key to it. So we just figured out that polyrhythms are pitch, and rhythm is harmony, and uh, there's all sorts of things we talked about, but you can kind of, you heard everything so far. So I'm going to kind of like take, it, take those ideas and build on them a little bit. So part five. It gets crazy now. You didn't think that everything else was crazy? Oh, it gets a lot crazier. So, what happened?